Hello everybody. We have a new game with the black pieces. Uh, against Zalkux 1338. He opens up with 1e4. We respond with d6 to play the perk. He, he then goes uh, d4. We develop our knight into the center. Attack his pawn. He develops his knight to c3. And protects the pawn. We go g6 so that we can fianchetto our bishop. As usual. Per the plan. He develops his light squared bishop, um, putting a little bit of pressure on the pawn. We're going to continue with our plan, develop our bishop, and get ready to castle. He, now he brings out his other bishop. I'm not sure why he's delaying this knight, um, but okay. So I'm just going to, maybe he's preparing to go queen d2 in long castle. Maybe he's avoiding a pin. Maybe these are the ideas behind delaying the knight move. So let's see. I'm just going to go c6. It controls these squares from his pieces. And it also prepares a future b5. Um, in case he wants to castle queenside. So now he develops his knight. Maybe he wants to castle kingside now that I did c6. Um, I could castle, but he still might castle queenside. So instead, I'm going to develop my my bishop and pin his knight, which is protecting this pawn. And let's see what he does. He might castle. He might kick my bishop, is what I was going to say next. So I'm going to take his knight so that I don't waste time. Also, I want this square for my other knight. So I do a forcing move. Um, it does hit develop the queen, but I'm not really sure what the queen's doing here. So let's see. If I castle and he pushes and I take and he takes possible but I think I want to develop my knight first get my last minor piece in the game we also can now play e5 but that would make the pin stronger so we don't need to do that we could just castle we also have queen a5 ideas so he does castle queen side so this is going to be uh, him attacking me me attacking him type of game um, so it's a little more complicated it's sharp now that he castled queenside, maybe I start with a tempo move that gains space. Let's go with the immediate b5. It comes with tempo, and I get to pawn storm his king before he pawn storms me. He goes bishop back. Tries to stay on this diagonal. <clears throat> Um, again, if he pushes and I take, take, well, my queen's in the way, so he's double attacking here, so I should probably just castle to protect this pawn, get my king safe, and then I can uh, start some stuff over here, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so he launches his pawn storm, g4. So we're going to let him do his thing on that side. I guess we'll do our thing on the other side. Um, let's see. How do we want to initiate this? Let's go with a5 because it's a forcing move. It threatens to trap the bishop to which he completely ignores. Because yes, it doesn't physically attack anything. So it doesn't look forcing. But a little closer observation would see that there's nowhere to go. If he socks, my rook is staring at the queen. I don't mind that. So he was playing pretty well. He was ready for that. So okay, maybe he th maybe he thinks it's all part of the attack. I don't know. Like it's maybe he thinks it's all good. <laughs> is it all good? Am I am I just losing? Um, I don't think so. I'm gonna continue and kick the knight. 
He can push or take. They both come with tempo as well. Um, also, I have his X-ray, which I completely forgot about. Even after I mentioned it before I took the pawn, and then forgot about it after I took the pawn. Um, if I take and he swings his queen over, there's never a mate because that's the whole point of this bishop here. So I'm gonna trust in the Fianchetto system and take the pawn and open up the H file. So here, um, I guess he's only trying to do this. I can also move my rook and evacuate my king. But since he's not threatening anything, like even if he goes here and I take him and he takes, well, this pawn's, my G pawn's loose, which is kind of annoying. But if I take his knight and he goes here, I could just reinforce with my queen. Also, this comes with check, and then maybe I can even attack. So he takes back. Now the B files open up. And also that knight was defending this pawn. This knight's also defending this square. So if I take, and he gives me this check, and I move my king, and he captures this pawn, then I get to take the bishop. And then after he takes the knight, should be fine there. It looks risky, but I should be fine, I think. <laughs> I have no idea. I think so. You know what? Give me a check. Come. Come to h7, guy. Leave this guy hanging with this x-ray on. This is what I want. And now you get to see the whole point of why people put their bishop here. Um, even when it's blocked with a central pawn, you see they put it here at, because of the defensive role that it plays. So he doesn't do that. He actually wants to triple and then sack something. But you can't sack the queen because I'm going to take the bishop. And if he gives me a check on h8, bishop takes, rook takes, king g7. He's just hanging all of his pieces. <laughs> That's not it. That's not it, friend. And uh, you have no pieces left. You know, oh, I see. I see this clever guy. And now I'm only up 13 points of material because he got my queen. <laughs> Why would you sack your whole army just if you were going to resign? We take those. Okay, now we're playing Uno Yan, 1302. E4, E5. We haven't gotten a single Sicilian, so this will be interesting to see at what rank uh, people start playing that on Lee Chess. I feel like by now in Chess.com I would have seen it. Excuse me. So this guy goes for the scholar's mate from black side. Scholar's mate down a tempo. Um, okay. <laughs> this pawn is defended, so you never have to worry about this stuff. Um, you obviously can't develop your knight because you'll get checkmated. Um, that's pretty hilarious. What does he do though if I bring my queen out? I'm curious. Now I'm threatening some type of weird thing. He develops a piece, putting pressure on this pawn. What is this position? Should I kick him? I mean, I don't really see a downside. And his queen's diagonal is blocked, so where, what's, he, what's the point of his... I don't get it. So now he offers a queen trade, which is weird, but okay. I'm just going to develop. We 
Wait, if I develop and he puts his knight in and I kick the knight and he gives me a check and I move my king over. His knight's hanging, his queen's x-rayed, so okay, I don't mind walking into him walking into that. Otherwise, he could take my queen and develop my knight for me. I appreciate it. And yeah, this g3 move looks a little... Wait, what? My opponent left the game? Okay, he's back. I didn't doubt you for a second. He develops another minor piece towards the center, which could potentially be annoying. Um, if I let him. So. Huh. What do we want to do? We could trade the queens and make his knight off sides. And then put our knight here. Which covers that square. Let's do that. Because then we could play f4. If we put our knight here. We don't play f4. And if we put it on e2. We actually have this pawn already on g3 supporting it, so it kind of makes sense. And now his knight is also stifled by this pawn, so he has to waste time going back, so that's kind of nice. Um, I don't have my queen, so there's no fast checkmate, but whatever. So it's my turn, so I can kind of copy him, and only I get there first. He could try to copy me, but he'll always be behind, I guess. Also... Well, let's just see what he does. I'm going to do it because it's a threat. That needs to be addressed, so it's not a waste of time. And I could always develop this knight next. And then castle. Maybe a castle long. So, he retreats his bishop, protecting. That makes sense. We're going to develop our knight, as we said we would, controlling the center. Now, one idea that is good to put in your arsenal is when you have a knight like this and it's hitting a bishop that's been backed up on these squares, an idea that you have is to push the pawn and if he ever tries to stop your pawn advancing, you can take the bishop and give him a really ugly pawn structure. So, in this case, if you go here, he's controlling it, so you're not immediately threatening to push again. Um, but I'm going to go for it anyway. It says my opponent left the game, so this is good. We run his clock down before he gets back. How oh, he's back already. Shucks. So he develops his bishop, puts a little pressure on my less active knight of the two. Um, and also, just so you know, I can always take the bishop pair, which is kind of nice, but I like my knight here. There's no reason to do anything like that. I'm going to put the question, well, no, not really, because I do want to play this, and I don't want to undefend the g-pawn. Thing is, I don't actually need the knight. I think I'm going to leave everything on the king side and just go b4. It seems like a completely random move, but it's not. It supports, well, it's, a th it's a threat. It's going to trap the bishop and or kick the knight. Um, but the trapping the bishop is the real threat. And like I said, what you're trying to do with these pawn moves is provoke him to move his a pawn, which def undefends the bishop. Now when you take the bishop, he has to take this way and he has a isolated backward d6 pawn. Now it, his structure is gross. So that's an advantage. Uh, we can continue from here. Uh, what should we do with this bishop now that we eliminated it? I've been wanting to put my bishop here this whole time. But I never wanted him to take, undouble my pawns and then like put a knight here at some point. Because his knight was here when I was thinking about that. Uh, but now that his bishop's gone... I could go here. The thing is, this pawn is currently hanging. So let's make the solidifying move, which completely shuts down this knight's possibilities. 
and makes it a lot worse. And then we can develop our bishop, and now our position is solid, beautiful pawn structure, good harmony. We just place it here. It comes with an immediate threat because our opponent's move doesn't castling. It's a good move, but it doesn't create a threat, so we have the time to do whatever we want. He take he gives up his only bishop for our knight, which was doing nothing, and connects our rooks for us, and in this what is approaching an endgame, gets our king closer to the center, so it actually supports squares and pieces that are important. So he he moves the pawn that was attacked and counterattacks the pawn and the bishop. Um, the drawback of this move is that the pawn is kind of hanging, right? I could take it. If he takes it, I win the pawn. So, I mean, winning the pawn is good. I'm not sure what... I don't know why he prefers this transformation of the position. At least if I went here, he... He got to he would be able to spend the turn doing something useful for himself like playing f5 and trying to break free but he just gave me a pawn and <laughs> and then he gave me control of the a file so thank you sir now he has to spend a, t a turn bringing his knight back in the game which is why you see why i did that queen trade earlier and why this pawn is here right because the pawn was here i traded the queens to offside his knight. If this pawn wasn't here, I wouldn't have traded the queens because he could always jump to f4, which is a good square. So, um, What just happened? Oh yeah, he moved his knight. It's my turn. I'm up a pawn. I could trade stuff. I'm just going to like keep it super simple because I have three minutes. I'm going to take his horrible knight. So in classical, you probably want to very much consider your peace trades. But here... He wrote, you are not speedrun. What does that mean? Oh, very slow. He writes very slow. <laughs> like a turtle. Wow, this guy's bullying me. Okay, so he takes... Should I write, that's why I'm winning? No, that's kind of uh, too true. People don't like the truth. So, what if I do this? I need to get my work as active as possible. Uh, that looks good. If he wants to defend, he has to go super passive. So that's not advisable. But he doesn't have any moves. So he like he has to kind of do it. Um, just to give me time to think, I'm just going to take away this move while I decide what I want to do. I have all the time in the world because he has no counterplay. So I could take my sweet time. Do I push F4? Okay, he makes the decision for me. He does this. Um, the drawback of this move is now I have a passed pawn. Which is extremely close to promoting and supported by my pieces. Also, notice that his king has a back rank problem. So castling is good, but when you're closer to an endgame, it's even more advisable sometimes to do what I did. Put your king just in the center immediately. Don't put it off sides. So he defends his pawn, which was hanging last turn, but getting a passed pawn is like a, is a win condition. You know, it's, it's like a free win, so I went for that. And now I'm going to solidify so he can never push, and now it's a connected passed pawn. So I know that in a king and pawn endgame, it's an automatic win for me. So if I can trade this stuff, right, if I can make trades, I win the game. So let's see what he does. He can't, you know, I have the A file, so it's not like he can come behind me and get counterplay. He moves his knight. He doesn't really have moves, so it makes sense. Um, but now my bishop's kind of blocked, so I'm going to reroute it. If I go here, he's just going to play this, F6. So at least I can try to go this way. I only have t uh, three pieces. The most powerful and mobile ones, the queen, I would look to the, you know, improve first, and then I would look at the rook, now the bishop, and then the king, once that's placed. Because I want my most powerful pieces fighting first. 
So he develops the knight. What does this threaten? Threatens the rook. So I have to move the rook. I don't know. I'm just going to move it here. Oh, is he doing this? I see. Okay, so he's trying to get his knight active. That's a good idea. It's not going to do anything here, but let's hit his rook with tempo. He's going to give me a check, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. And the only thing wrong with my position is my clock. I have less than two minutes. So I, there's a good chance I'm going to blunder my rook. Um, if he does give me this check, where do I want my king? Maybe just up. And if he gives me this check, I go over. Nah, that's weird. Okay, so he moves his rook out of the way. No check. That undefends this pawn. What if I just push? Check. Here. I'm just going to push. I don't feel like calculating. I have a bishop and a rook. Maybe it'll work. Oh, he actually has check him back. Although I could push. Oh no. Oh yeah. Oh no. Because if he takes and I take the rook, he can take. Okay, so maybe I shouldn't be as careless as I'm be being at the moment. But let's continue. I also don't feel like f figuring out what's the best squares for my king. So I'm just putting it here. Um, okay, he doesn't go for this. So I don't care about this. He can take my bishop. This wasn't the way. I actually had to find a response here. I, I mean, I could have just moved my rook back as a response, but um, maybe I had something better. Okay, so he attacks the pawn. Now, what if I pin him, right? He can't take the pawn. And if he takes the bishop, I take the rook. If he takes the rook, I get the queen. Yeah, so that's game over. That was a good game. Of course, with more time, you are, you, you're more accurate. And yes, he had back rank problems. That's why it's a checkmate when I take the rook. That was a good game. Um, you know what they say, the turtle wins the race. So calling me a turtle is kind of a compliment. He's saying I'm a winner, a champion of sorts. Anyway, we win another game. Um, send me your rapid games, and I'll review them. Goodbye.